The best way to learn programming is to start building a simple project. We also want to do this. If you want to learn the basics of Flutter by doing a project, watch this video until the end. To learn the basics of Flutter in the UI section, we are going to implement this project simply. By doing this project, I assure you that your level will improve and you will be prepared for more important topics. So let's do it. Because there are many tutorials on the internet for installing the Flutter, Editor, and Emulator, I haven't recorded the tutorial for these things, and you can do it with a simple search. To get started, click on the terminal, then first First type the command flutter create and then type the name of the project in front of it. And finally press enter to create our flutter project. Now open the project. The structure of the folder is like this, but for now, we only work with the lib folder. The main file of the generated project is the entry point of the Flutter application. We know that any programming language has the main entry point. This means that this is where our program first gets programmatically executed. So in Dart we also have this which called main function. What makes the Flutter application take the scene is the run app function called by passing a widget as a parameter, which will be the root widget of the application. Now we need to run the application. To do this, first select your emulator, then press the F5 button. After running the application, you will see a screen like this. This is the default application of Flutter, which is written in the My Home Page class. Now it's time to start coding. First we create a folder called Pages where we create different pages of the application. If we look at the design we want to implement, we will see that we have only one page, so we create a file called Home in the Pages folder. At the beginning of each page, we must import the material package. Flutter has widgets specific to a particular platform. Android or iOS. Android-specific widgets are designed in accordance with Material Design Guideline by Android OS, and they are called as Material Widgets. And iOS-specific widgets are designed in accordance with Human Interface Guidelines by Apple, and they are called as Cupertino Widgets. Now, to start we need to create a class called Home Screen. Flutter has two core types of widgets, Stateless and Stateful. These two widgets are the building blocks of every widget that Flutter provides. In simple words, stateless widgets cannot change their state during the runtime of the app, which means the widgets cannot be redrawn while the app is in action. But stateful widgets have a mutable state. They are mutable and can be drawn multiple times within its lifetime. They are the widgets which can change their state multiple times and can be redrawn onto the screen any number of times while the app is in action. For now, we need to create a stateless widget. For this we can use the SDL shortcut. By typing SDL the editor will suggest the stateless widget and by clicking on it, the widget will be created and we can immediately type the name of the class. In order to set the first page of the application is the home page. It is enough to set the value of the home property equal to the home page class in the main.dart file. And the rest of the codes are not necessary at the moment and can be deleted. To solve the problem of these lines, we must put the keyword cons before material. The const keyword is used when the value of the variable is known at compile time and never changes. In other words, the compiler knows in advance what value is to be stored in that variable. In the next videos, we will talk about the const keyword in detail, that's all you need to know for now. Now, if we restart the app, we will see that the page is empty, because we did not write a special code to display something in the home page class. Also, in order to remove this red debug banner, we need to set the debug show checked mode banner property to false in the material. Our work is almost finished in the main.dart file, now it's time to start the main work in the home file. But before starting, let me explain the build method very briefly. The build method describes the part of the user interface represented by this widget. The return type of this method is a widget, so we can return any widget. But here we need to return a scaffold. But what is scaffold? Scaffold is a class in Flutter which provides many widgets or we can say APIs like app bar, drawer, floating action button, bottom navigation bar, snack bar, and so on. In other words, scaffold will expand or occupy the whole device screen. Scaffold will provide a framework to implement the basic material design layout of the application. If we look again at the design, we will see that above we have an app bar, so the first thing we need to do is add an app bar to the scaffold. To do this, we need to pass an app bar widget to the app bar property in the scaffold like this. Now we have to put the breakfast text in the center of the app bar, but before that, let's add the font used in the design to the project. For this, first, we create a folder called fonts outside the lib folder, then we add the fonts inside it. And finally, we have to define the fonts in the pubspec.yaml file. For this, we scroll down and uncomment the fonts section, and then we first write the name of the font family, and at the end, we enter the fonts and the weight of the fonts like this. Now, in order for the project to recognize the fonts, we open the terminal and enter the flutter pubgit command. And if there is no problem and we have added the fonts correctly, we will see this message. In order to have this font applied to all the texts in the app, we must define it in the main.dart in the theme of the application. So we open the main.dart phylum. In the material app class and in the theme property, we define font of the application and theme data like this. Now let's go back to the home file and complete the app bar. So in order to put the text in the app bar, we use the title property in the app bar and pass the text widget to it. The reason for this error is that the text widget has a required parameter of the type string, and here we have to set its value equal to breakfast. 
Now I restart the app and we see the text breakfast in the app bar, but the text is not in the center. To bring the text to the center of the app bar, we can use the center title property and set its value to true. We can use the style property to change the style of the text. And in text style, we can change the font size and its color according to the design. We should make its color black and make its size smaller, as well as make its font weight bold. Now we need to change the background color of the app bar to white. For this we just need to use the background color property and set its value to white. If we look at the design, the app bar does not have a shadow. In order to remove the shadow of the app bar, we must set the elevation value to zero. Well, let's go back to the design. Apart from that we have text in the app bar, we also have two buttons. They are not exactly buttons, but they work as buttons. Inside the buttons we have icons that we have to use as SVG. To use SVG in Flutter, we must use the Flutter SVG package. But how to use SVG package in Flutter? It is very simple. From here we copy the package name together with the version, and then place it in pubspec.yaml in the dependencies section and finally enter Flutter pubgit in the terminal. In order to implement the left button, we must use the leading property in the app bar. This button consists of two parts, a gray box and an icon. We can do this with the container widget. And for container style for example, color and radius and etc. We should use decoration. I set the color of the container equal to black so that it is clear. Also the corners of the container have a radius and we should use the border radius for it. Now we have to reduce the size of the container. If we set a value for the width and height of the container, we will see that it will not change, neither bigger nor smaller, so what should we do? Exceptionally, we have to use the margin to set the size in the leading. So I use the margin in the container and leave a distance of 10 on all sides, and the container becomes small. Now it's time to implement the icon in the center of the container. As I said before, we have to use SVG. For this, we have to define SVGs like fonts in the project. So first we create a folder called Assets and inside it we create another folder called Icons and put files in it. Now open the pubspec.yaml and scroll down and uncomment the Assets section and define the path of the Icons folder. And finally open the terminal and enter Flutter pubget. Now we display the icon using the child property in the container and the SVG picture widget from the Flutter SVG package. To fix this error, we must import the Flutter SVG package like this, and finally, we must pass the path of the icon to the SVG picture. The reason why the icon is not visible is that both the color of the icon and the color of the container are black, and we have to change the color of the container to the color that is in the design. Because the color in the design is not a const color it should be used in this way, we must put the 0xff code before the main color code. Now we have to reduce the size of the icon. For this we can use the height and width in the SVG picture widget. But wait, why didn't it change? To be honest, I don't know either, but there is a magic solution to solve this problem. If we set the value of the alignment property in the container equal to center, the problem will be solved. We can easily use this code for the right button. In order to show this code on the right side of the app bar, we need to use the actions property, which we can give a list of widgets to it. We can see that it is not displayed correctly and the width of the button is small. To correct this, we must define a width for the container in actions. Now we can see that it is exactly like the button on the left. And finally we need change the path of the icon to this. The implementation of the app bar is almost finished. The only thing left is that now these buttons that we made with the container are not clickable. To make them clickable, we just need to wrap the containers inside the gesture detector widget. Now in the onTap property we can call any function we want. In order to have a clean class, we can extract this entire part of the app bar into a method and just call it. To do this, we click on the yellow light bulb, then select the extract method option, enter the name of the method, and that's it. Now we have clean code. The next step is to implement the search text field. We have to do this in the body property of the scaffold. If we look at the design, we can see that the elements are under each other, so we must use a widget called column in the body. To implement the text field, we must use the text field widget. Now if we click on the text field, we can see that we can type, but this is a very basic text field and we need to style it. To change the style of the text field, we must use the decoration property and pass an input decoration widget to it. Now inside the input decoration, the first thing we have to do is to set the filled property value to true and also set the filled color to white. Now the text field is not very clear, according to the design. It should be at a distance from the top and around and also have a shadow. To make these changes, we wrap the text field inside a container and then use edge insets dot only to make margins from the top, left and right. To create shadow in the container, we must use the decoration property, and then we use the box shadow inside the box decoration and set the value of the box shadow properties exactly like the shadow in the design. We can use with opacity method to set the transparent background color. Here, 0.11 is an opacity value, which ranges from 0 minus 1. The text looks much better now, but there are a few things we need to do. The first thing we need to do is to remove the border of the text field and also give the text field a border radius. 
For this, we use outline input border and the border property of input decoration and first set the border radius, then set the border side value to none. Now we need to reduce the height of the text field a little. For this we use content padding and decoration, which takes an edge and sets geometry widget. Now we have to implement the search icon, filter, etc. in the text field. First, we place the icons in the icons folder and execute the flutter pubgit command again so that the icons are defined in the project. To display the search icon on the left side of the text field, we must use a property called prefix icon, which is a widget type, so we can use SVG picture and specify the path of the icon. But the icon is big and we have to make it smaller for this way. We can wrap the SVG picture inside the padding widget. Then we set the amount of padding 12 and the icon becomes small. To display the icon on the right side of the text field, we must use suffix icon and then do exactly what we did for the search icon, and use SVG picture and use padding to reduce the size of the icon. Also, there is a thin vertical line next to the filter icon, so that we can display it next to the filter icon, we must use the row widget. Now it is row widget. This widget arranges its children in a horizontal direction on the screen. In other words, it will expect child widgets in a horizontal array. To change the UI, we need to play with cross-axis alignment and main-axis alignment. In the row widget, main axis alignment will be in the horizontal direction and cross axis alignment in the vertical direction. Therefore, after using row, we must also set the value of the main axis alignment property equal to n so that it is displayed on the right side of the text field. So I wrap the icon inside the row widget. In the explanation of the row widget I said that in order for the right side to be displayed, the value of the main axis alignment property in row should be equal to end. Now you can see that it is displayed on the right side. Now I create a vertical line using the vertical divider widget. Then I set the color of the line equal to the color in the design. And I also set its thickness to 0.1, but nothing is displayed. Here is one point that you must pay attention to. When we want to use divider in a row widget, we must wrap the row inside intrinsic height. I think the color of the design is too pale, that's why I make it black and now it's easy to see. And finally we need to reduce the height of the line. For this we can use two properties, indent and indentant. The work of indent is to create space from the top, and the work of indentant is to create space from the bottom. The last thing we have to do is to show the search pancake text. For this we have to use hint text property in the text field and we have to set its value as a string. But nothing is displayed again. What do you think is the problem? Let me tell you, there is a problem with the suffix icon because we did not set a width for the row. For example, if I wrap the suffix icon inside a container and set a color for it, we will see that it occupies the entire width of the text field and because of this hint text is not displayed. So I set the width of the container to 100. Now we see that the hint text is displayed, and in order to change the style of the hint text, we use the hint text style and change its style according to the design. So the implementation of the search text field is finished. Now the only thing we have to do is to set the body color to white. For this we use the background color in the scaffold and set the body color to white. In order to increase the readability of the code, we extract the text field again like the app bar using the extract method. Now we have to implement the category section. It consists of two parts. The first part is category text and the second part is a list view that contains information about categories. Because the list view is under the category text we can use column for implementation. Let me first explain what column is. Column is a widget that displays its children in a vertical array. If you want to define several widgets rendered in a vertical column according to their order, the column widget is suitable for that purpose. We can also control how a column widget aligns its children using the property main axis alignment and cross axis alignment. The column's cross axis will run horizontally, and the main axis will run vertically. So first we create a column, then we need to display the category text, which we can display using text and we can change the style of the text using style. We already reviewed the text widget together, now we don't need to deal with it. We have two problems here. First, we need to create a distance from the top. For this we can use the size box and set the height, which causes a vertical distance to be created between the two widgets, namely the search field and the category text. Now the text is in the center, which should be displayed on the left side. For this, we have to set the cross-axis alignment property of the column that is in the body to start. This column, which is in the body, does not need to be there and should be changed. I have put it to explain a point that I will say later, so wait. Now we need to create space from the left side. For this we wrap the text inside the padding and then set the padding from the left side. The next step is to implement this horizontal list view. The first thing we have to do is create a container and set the height we want the list to have. I also set a color to make it more specific, which we will delete at the end. We also need to create a vertical distance from the category text, which we can use size box again. Because we use column here too, in order to display the text on the left again, we need to set the value of cross axis alignment equal to start. And in order to have a list of items in Flutter, we can use the List View Builder widget. So I put the List View Builder widget in the child container. The reason for this error is that List View Builder has a required parameter called Item Builder, which we use to display items. And in its return, we must return a widget. 
Also, Item Builder has an argument named index, which is actually the item number. If we look at the design, we can see that the information of the items is not the same. The icon, the name, and even the background color of the box are different. So, how do you think we can implement this? Should we check with if? For example, if the item number is 0, show the salad text, or if it is 1, show the cake text. No, no, this is a wrong way. We should use model instead of this way. To create category model, first we need create a folder called models. Then we create a file called category model inside this folder. Here the first thing we have to do is create a class. So I define a class called category model. Now we need to define the parameters and then create the class constructor. If we look at the design, we can distinguish three parameters that are different from each other in the items. Category name, icon, and background color of the box. Therefore, we need to define three parameters. The variable type of icon and name is string. The reason why icon is of string type is that the icons are SVG, and we need its path. And finally, we define box color, which is of color type. Now we create the constructor of the class. To fix these errors, we only need to put the required keyword before each parameter in the constructor. Now how should we use this model? As you know, we have a list of items whose information is displayed through this model. So we need a list of this model. The first thing we need to do is create a method called getCategories that returns a list of categories. Now inside this method, first we define a list named Categories, which will actually add the categories to this list and finally we will return this list. According to the design that we have four categories, we enter their information in the model and then add them to the categories and finally we need to return this list. To use this method, we must first define a list of this category model on the home page, then get the list of categories from this method. To get the list, first we create a method called getCategories. In order to be able to access the function we created in the category model class, we have two ways. Either to create an instance of the category model class or to make the method static so that without to instantiate the class we can access it. My preference is to use the second method. Therefore, I add the word static before the method. Then, using categories model.getCategories, we get the models we made and put them in the list we defined. Now to use this list, the first thing we have to do is to call this function somewhere to fill the list. We can convert the class to stateful so that we can call it in the init state method, which is not necessary at the moment. And we can call it at the beginning of the build method so that the list is filled first and then the widgets are displayed. Now we have to use this list in the list view builder that we made. List view builder has a property called item count in which we specify the number of items. By using categories.length, we can make the number of items equal to the number of categories and define categories for list view builder. Now we have to make the items according to the design. First, we use decoration to determine the color of the boxes. To access the colors that we define in the construction of the models, we can simply specify the index of the item in the categories, then select the box color field like this. Now to display I set height and width. But it is not displayed correctly. The reason is that we did not specify the scroll direction. And now the list scrolls vertically and we have to convert it to horizontal. To do this, we set the value of the scroll direction property using axis equal to horizontal. Now we don't need to define the height for the item because it is not applied and the height of the list view is applied to the items. So I delete it. Now we need to increase the width of the items, then we need to create a distance between the items. The best thing we can do is to convert the list view builder to list view separated. The reason for the error is that the separator builder property must have a value and we must set a widget for it. We can use the size box widget and set the width and create space between the items. In order to make the implementation closer to the design, I reduce the opacity of the boxes and also reduce the height of the list view, and finally add space from the left and right to the list view using the padding property. Then we set the radius for the boxes. To implement the inside the boxes we can use column and child because the category icon and title are located below each other. Now, first we need to create a white circle. For this we can use container and in its decoration we set the value of shape property equal to circle. In order for the widgets inside the column to be placed in the center, it is enough to make the main axis alignment equal to the center. Now we have to display the icons in the center of the white circle. For this we use SVG picture and pass the path of the icons that we defined in the models. We have to use padding to reduce the size of the icons. Because for some reason that I don't know, setting within height does not reduce the size and has no effect. Now, finally, we have to show the name of the category, which we do using the text widget. To create a space between the text and the icon, we can change the main axis alignment value from center to space evenly. And finally, for the readability of the code, we extract the categories section into a method. The categories section was done. Now we have to implement the recommendation for diet section. This section is also simple and we have to do exactly what we did for the categories section. First, we need to create the model class of the items, then define the function in which we create the models. I did it in order not to make the video long and boring. Here we have defined a boolean field called view is selected, which will change the color of the view text and also the display of the view button box with its help. 
Now like the categories, first we define a list of diet models, then we create a function and get the list from the getDiets function that we created in the diet model class. Here we can do something else instead of creating a function to get the information of each section. We just create a function called getInitialInfo, and we get the lists inside this and then we just call this function in the build method. Let's go to implement the design. First using the size box widget we create space from the top. The implementation of this section is exactly like the implementation of the categories section. First we create a column. Then we put the text recommendation for diet using the text widget. The style of this text is the same as the category text, so I just copy its style and paste it here, and I also set its padding from the left side. Now we use list view builder to display the list again. First, we create a space between the text and the list view using size box. Then we define a container and set its height to 240. Also, we set the cross axis alignment to start so that the text is not displayed in the center. Now we put the list view in the child of container because we want to have a distance between the items. We use list view dot separated. Then we set the length of the diets list in the item count property. For the space between the items, we set the size box widget with a horizontal size of 25. Then we return a container in the item builder. Now first First we set the width of the container to 210. Then we specify the color box that we defined in the model in decoration. And finally, we also set the radius for the boxes. The reason why the list is not displayed is that we need to set the scroll direction to horizontal, so we do this. We also reduce the opacity of the color boxes and set the padding from the left and right sides for the list view. To implement inside the box, the first thing we have to do is to define a column in the child of container. Then first we display the icon using SVG picture. Now we have to display the name of diet, which we do using the text widget and set its value equal to the value we put in the model. Then we set the text style. To display the level, duration, and calorie texts, we can easily use a text widget and display them together by plus. To implement the view button, we first define a container with a height of 45 and a width of 130. If we pay attention to the design, the color box is in the form of a gradient. To display the gradient in decoration, we can use the gradient property, and depending on the type of gradient, we can use the widget. In the design, the gradient type is linear gradient, so we use linear gradient. And then in the color property, we define the list of colors. To create space between the widgets, we set the main axis alignment equal to space evenly. The space between the name of the diet and the lower text is short, so that we can reduce the space. We just need to put those two in one column. Now we set the radius for the button. Then we put the view text in the child and change its style to the design style. Finally, what we need to do is to check that if the view is selected property value is true. The color of the view text is white and the color of the button has a gradient color. And if it is not true, do not show the gradient and the color of the view text according to the design is purple. For this, we can use the question operator, which does the work of if. Therefore, first we check if it is equal to true and then we put a question mark and define the correct condition, which can be colors, and if it is not true, we put colon and set the colors to transparent. We do the same thing for the color view text. How to work with the question operator is like this. The implementation of the recommendation for diet section has also been completed. To make the code readable, we extract this section again into a method. Now we need to implement the popular section. This section is exactly like the previous sections. First, we need to define a model class so that the video is not long. I did this. Again, here we have a boolean called is box selected, which we want to use to control the display of the box shadow. Now we go back to the home page and first we define a list of popular models and then we get the list in the get initial info function from the get popular diets function. Now we create space from top using size box. Then we define a column and first display the popular text and exactly set the category text style for it and also set the padding from the left side. The reason for displaying the overflowed error is that the total height of the widgets placed on the page is greater than the height of the entire page and it must be scroll. In order to be able to scroll the body, we must use list view instead of column. Now, in order for the text to be displayed on the left side, we set the cross axis alignment to start. Also, taking into account that we must have a distance from the bottom of the page, we use a size box again after the column. Now let's go and implement the list view. For this we first create a space from the popular text. Then we use the list view dot separated if we want to have a distance between the items. Here first we set the item count equal to the popular diet's length. Then in the separated builder, we place a size box with a height of 25. In the item builder, we return a container with a height of 115. But the list is not displayed and we have an error. To fix this error, we must set the value of the shrink wrap property to true. If you do not set the shrink wrap property, your list view will be as big as its parent. If you set it to true, the list will wrap its content and be as big as its children allows it to be. Now we set the padding from the right and the left for the list. Then we go to the decoration of the container. First, we set the color of the box to white. Then we set the radius, and finally we set the shadow of the container according to the design. To implement inside the box, since the widgets are in one line, we must use row, so we set row in the child container, then we display the icon using SVG picture. I feel that the height of the container is too high, so I reduce it to 100. 
Now we have to show the name, level, and etc. If we pay attention to the design, we can see that they are in a column below each other, so we have to use column. First we display the name using the text widget, and then we set its style. And finally we display the level, duration, and calorie text like this. In order to create space between widgets in a row, we must set the main axis alignment equal to space evenly. Also by setting within height we make the icon size a little bigger. In order for the text to be displayed in the center, we must set the main axis alignment in the column equal to center, and also to display it exactly below each other, we set the cross axis alignment equal to start. And finally we need to display the button icon, which we need to use SVG picture, and to be clickable, we just need to wrap it inside the gesture detector. Also we have to check that if box is selected is equal to true, the color of the box is white and the box has a shadow, otherwise the box is transparent. We can do this with the question mark operator. To fix these blue warnings, we just need to add the keyword const. For this, we right click on one of the lines and select the add const modifiers everywhere in file. Congratulations, you have successfully completed this tutorial. If you need help let us know in the comments. And make to sure hit the subscribe button to get the next video.